Once upon a time, I said Max Crosby, edge rusher for the now Las Vegas Raiders, was one of the more overrated players in the NFL. And even though Crosby himself came to me on Twitter and let me know I had no idea what I was talking about, uh, I'll stand by what I said at the time. And to be clear, Max was never a bad player. I just always felt like the comparisons of him to really high-end pass rushers, guys like Nick Bosa, for example, were outrageous. I just didn't agree with those comparisons. For one, his sack conversion rate earlier on in his career was just unsustainable. The amount of sacks he got uh, for the amount of pressures he got was just an outlier. So in his rookie season, for example, he converted 25% of his pressures into sacks. That ended up getting him an 11 sack season and all of this hype to begin with. If you look at the league average of 18% sack conversion rate, you would expect that to be more of a seven or an eight sack season. Again, a good season, but not, you know, the level that he was being compared at. And sure enough, in 2020, his second season, uh, he actually ended up with more pressures, 48 pressures compared to 45, but he only ended up with seven sacks, which is much closer to what you would expect. Again, second off, uh, Crosby's pressure rate itself, the amount of pass rush snaps that he was able to generate a pressure was at 9%, which is actually really average to below average. Whereas you look at what you typically consider an alpha rusher, you wanna see around that 15% mark. Nick Bosa, for example, who he was being compared to, his rookie season was at 17%, nearly double that of Max Crosby that season. And that's just why I never agreed with the comparisons. But now in 2021, with Gus Bradley running the Raiders defense, Max Crosby has completely flipped that script to the point where he's now one of the league's better edge rushers and a genuine defensive player of the year candidate. We're gonna get into the film here in just a second and show how Max Crosby is so dangerous on the field, but just to show some numbers to back up why he's so much better this year, uh, as we sit here in week 13 of the 2021 NFL season, Max Crosby has 76 quarterback pressures. That's very close to doubling his total from his first two seasons of 45 and 48. Also, that pressure rate of just 9% where he was at the first two seasons, that rate of pass rush snaps that he was able to pressure the quarterback, it's now skyrocketed to 18%, which is more than Nick Bosa had in that rookie season. So new information here, Max Crosby is a beast. So let's get into what Max Crosby does on the field that makes him so dangerous. And honestly, the answer to that question is pretty simple because he does what you wanna see from any alpha pass rusher. The same thing you'll hear me talk about with just about every single pass rushing prospect during the draft season. He converts speed to power and has also leveraged that threat of speed and power to put together a full package of rush moves that keep offensive linemen literally on their heels. Because if you can't threaten with speed and power, offensive tackles can just tune their pass sets to neutralize what you do well. And in 2021, O-linemen have been guessing at how they're supposed to block Max Crosby since the first week of the season. Because he can threaten with both speed and power, the Raiders love to rush Crosby from a wide approach. This forces offensive linemen to respect his speed, which, by the way, is very real. Look no further than his ability to chase down Lamar Jackson in space right here in week one. But by forcing O-linemen to speed up their kick slides in order to set so wide and account for that speed, Crosby is able to expose linemen with his most dominant move, the bull rush where Crosby also appears to have beefed up and has shown some legit high-end power this season. There's no hiding that this bull rush is ultimately what's gonna get Crosby paid a shit ton of money very, very soon. But what's impressive is it's not just raw speed and power. A lot of players have that. He also comes with every other trait you look for in an elite bull rusher. He has the get off to generate momentum. He has the length with 33 inch arms to land his hands inside before the tackle can land his, at which point Crosby has usually already won the rep. Not to mention he has the right amount of hand-eye coordination it takes to consistently stick your hands inside. And he has the true, genuine, grown man strength that it takes to overwhelm a 310 pound human. Crosby has countless wins with this bull rush this season, but without that threat of speed, forcing tackles to set as wide as he does, 
Anchoring against this bull rush would be significantly easier for these tackles. And when tackles don't get wide enough to account for his speed and his bend, he'll happily take that corner and get after the quarterback. And that's just what the ability to convert speed to power can do on the most basic of levels. But many rushers can do this consistently and not put up defensive player of the year like numbers just as Crosby has done. And Crosby has really expanded his pass rushing tool belt to keep tackles guessing with a variety of different pass rush moves. So what are those moves? Well, one of his go-tos here is the cross chop to bend move that is the perfect counter move to a bull rush. The best way to not get beat on the bull rush if you're an offensive tackle is to not let your opponent get his hands inside on you because a rusher like Crosby can very quickly set your chest backwards, which naturally is only gonna force the tackle to lose his base underneath him. And the only way to kind of ensure that you can't get beat with your hands inside is to show your hands early and kind of attack with your hands. And, and that's when you become susceptible to a move like the cross chop. So when tackles do show their hands early, Crosby A is just really good at identifying that, but he's also nasty at um, starting his cross chop. So he swipes his outside arm inside to knock the lineman's hands in, and then he rips through with the other arm, his inside arm, where he can then leverage that juice that acceleration and bend that he has to get around the tackle and eventually to the quarterback so this is often the next step in a power rusher's development and man it's been really fun to see crosby get there with this move specifically but to make things even more difficult crosby seems to have loaded up either some robert mathis or everson griffin tape this summer uh, because now he's added a spin move to his tool belt and not just that, he can spin both inside and outside. And spins are really tough to pull off against NFL tackles because they require a ton of quickness, but also something not a lot of people may think about with a spin move, and that is power. For a couple of reasons. Number one, I think everything I said about setting up that cross chop move with the power applies to a spin move. That threat of the power just forces tackles to account for you in a different way that leaves you susceptible to some of these other finesse moves. But I also say power because you need a lot of raw arm strength to be able to continue moving the tackle inside basically just with your triceps as you expose your back to the tackles because that's what gets them out of position where they can't defend the spin. And this is a big reason why I think Everson Griffin at 273 pounds has actually been one of the better spin move guys in the league over the last, I don't know, five, six years. But needless to say, Crosby has all of the right tools to pull off the spin. He's got speed, quickness, and the power in his arms to pull this thing off. And he's definitely made it a key weapon in his tool belt that is just adding to the amount of things the tackles need to account for uh, and confusing them on what he's gonna do each rep. Now, as with any great player, I also wanna take a look at how the Raiders are scheming up Max Crosby to maximize his impact on the game as well. Because Gus Bradley, the new defensive coordinator in Las Vegas, has also done an excellent job of using Crosby's traits to the defense's advantage. And what stands out specifically with the Raiders is their heavy use of cross stunts up front. And this is an age-old trick in the NFL that goes back to the 1960s. You know, defenses around the league today use it constantly, and they do it to confuse linemen and generate edginess up front in the protection. It just creates chaos. And Gus Bradley has used a ton of these this season. I believe in large part because of Max Crosby's elite ability to knife inside the offensive line as quickly as he does and with the violence that he does. While Crosby has all of these other weapons at his disposal, at his core, he's just a really explosive, violent player. And his ability to fire into a different gap, sometimes two gaps over, the ability to play low, strong, and just pursue the quarterback after the stunt creates some edginess up front, these are the perfect combination of tools to be deployed on stunts like this. I don't have the exact numbers, but I expect about a quarter of Crosby's pressures this season have come on these stunts alone, so it's not just him creating, it's him getting up, uh, schemed up appropriately as well. And as one last cherry on top, I do think that the threat of these stunts really maximizes that spin move we talked about because the last thing on a tackle's mind, if he's worried about 
you know, Crosby knifing inside and the tackle having to pass Crosby off and then pick up the defensive tackle. The last thing he's worried about is Crosby basically juking him out and then using that spin move to gain the outside corner and bend around him. That's It's just a lethal combination of scheme and skill set. So Crosby's really, at the end of the day, just putting on a pass rushing clinic this season of what a player with both speed and power is supposed to look like. We've already seen teams respect Crosby as an alpha rusher as well by, by setting their protections the way they have the last few weeks. We've seen him chipped, double teamed, triple teamed, all of the same tactics the teams use on guys like Miles Garrett and Khalil Mack throughout the last, you know, forever. And as someone who once upon a time called Max Crosby an overrated player, it's been truly fun to see him evolve into one of the game's best edge rushers and a genuine defensive player of the year candidate. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please do hit that like button down below, it really helps me out. Also make sure you subscribe for more NFL analysis and draft content just around the corner. And until next time guys, peace out, we'll see you later.